Dr. Ethan Cowan. I am a professor of emergency medicine um, at Mount Sinai Beth Israel in Manhattan. And I'm also the director of the emergency department health education programs at the Mount Sinai, uh, through the Mount Sinai Health System. Okay, so hepatitis in its most basic form is basically just inflammation of your liver. So ongoing damage of the liver. And the liver is an organ in your body that acts as kind of a cleaner, almost like a vacuum cleaner or a filter. So it cleans your blood and helps you get rid of toxic substances and also fight infection. Now, inflammation in the liver, hepatitis, can be caused by many things, including things like alcohol, toxic substances, some medications, and then some specific medical conditions. However, in the United States, the most common cause of hepatitis um, the most common causes of hepatitis are viruses. And there are three uh, very common causes, three very common viral causes of, uh, causes of hepatitis in the United States. And those are hepatitis A virus, hepatitis B virus, and hepatitis C virus. There's also hepatitis D and hepatitis E. Um, and those I'm not actually gonna talk much about today, but those are other two other viruses that can also cause hepatitis. Now, while hepatitis A, B, and C are all caused by a virus, the type of hepatitis caused by each virus is a little bit different. So hepatitis A is spread by what's, is caused by the virus, hepatitis A virus, and it's spread by what's called fecal oral transmission. And this happens most commonly when someone ingests food or water that's contaminated with the feces of stool, feces or stool of of another infected person. Sometimes you hear about outbreaks um, in restaurants from contaminated food from a restaurant worker or contaminated water that's sprayed on different vegetables. So there's many different ways that, that there can, you can get this type of contamination. Hepatitis A lasts from about a few weeks to a few months and in rare cases can lead to complete liver failure resulting in death, but most commonly it resolves on its own without any long-term repercussions. Now, hepatitis B, on the other hand, is primarily spread when blood from an infected person enters the body of someone who's not infected. So this can happen by sharing things that are contaminated with blood from an infected person, such as needles, toothbrushes, or razors. And about 15 to 25% of people who get hepatitis B go on to have chronic liver disease. The other, the other people can clear the virus. Hepatitis C, like hepatitis B, is spread by infected blood. And in the United States, people who received a blood transfusion before 1992 are at high risk for hepatitis C because the blood supply was not screened for the virus prior to that time period. The other major group at risk for hepatitis C are those individuals who inject drugs. Um, and more than 50% of people who get hepatitis C go on to have chronic liver disease. Now, in the United States currently, the most the most, the population that has the most rapid increase in hepatitis C are injection drug users. And this is due really to the, the rampant opioid epidemic that we're seeing now, which got worse during the COVID epidemic. So in terms of symptoms, it's not uncommon for people who've been infected with any of these types of viral hepatitis to have no symptoms. Um, if symptoms do occur, they tend to be vague and start anywhere between two weeks to six months after getting infected, depending on which virus you're infected with. And the symptoms that you get tend to be like any other viral syndrome, something like the flu. So these can include things like feeling tired, having joint or muscle pain, or having a low-grade fever. There are some more specific symptoms of liver damage, and these include things like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, particularly in the right upper part of the abdomen, dark urine, and then a yellowing of the skin, which we call jaundice. Although that, those types of symptoms are not that common with acute infection. The first thing I think to know is who should get tested and then how to get tested. So routine testing for hepatitis A is not recommended for most people in cases where there's a potential outbreak and people have viral type symptoms, those people should probably get tested for hepatitis A, but, but it's not generally recommended for the, for the population. Hepatitis B testing is recommended for anyone living in an area 
or coming from a country where more than 2% of the people are infected with hepatitis B. So these are certain areas in Africa and Southeast Asia, and then certain, certain populations or certain low geographic locations in the United States. Testing is also recommended for people who inject drugs, men who have sex with men, pregnant mothers, people with chronic kidney disease and those taking drugs that could suppress the immune system. And then anybody that has blood tests showing some sort of liver injury, those people should get tested for hepatitis B. The other group that should get tested for hepatitis B routinely are those with HIV. For hepatitis C, the current recommendation is that every single person over the age of 18 get tested at least once in their lifetime for hepatitis C. Um, and groups that have continuing or ongoing risk for hepatitis C, like those who inject drugs, should get tested more frequently. In terms of how you get tested, well, the main thing to do is you should ask your doctor about testing. Um, the, the, blood, the test is very simple. Uh, it's just a blood test for, for all of these viruses, hepatitis A, B, and C. There's also a lot of emergency department now, a lot of emergency departments now that are offering routine hepatitis C testing. So if you go to the ER, you may get asked about hepatitis testing or HIV testing. And in those cases, if you haven't been tested previously, you should definitely get tested. So hepatitis in patients who are HIV positive, um, it's a similar disease in those who are not HIV positive. The only difference really is the how fast the disease progresses to irreversible liver damage. So people who are HIV positive or people who have other conditions that suppress their immune system, their form of hepatitis is likely to be more severe and more rapid. So those people are more likely to go on to develop chronic hepatitis C, have ongoing liver damage, develop something called cirrhosis, um, and be at higher risk for things like liver cancer. Individuals with, with HIV also may be less likely to have symptoms associated with hepatitis. So I said before that, you know, there, you, may you may get some general symptoms of a viral illness. Well, individuals with HIV may not get those symptoms. So it's recommended that patients with HIV get routinely tested for things like hepatitis B and hepatitis C more often than the general population. But the treatment for the disease in those in, in individuals with HIV are basically, is basically the same as those who do not have HIV. And the cure rates, at least for something like hepatitis C in patients with HIV are, are the same as they are for individuals without HIV. So, so the diseases, the treatment of the diseases and your chances of successful treatment are the same whether you have HIV or, or not. 